Ave Maria Prisima. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. There's a line in the, in the gospel, and it's also used in the, in the communion. Veniti Adme. Uh, there's an absolutely beautiful motet by Anario, Veniti Adme. So it's, I'm, I'm sure you could find it on the computer if you're interested, but uh, that's really uh, one of the more extraordinary motets. Veniti Adme. So it's that line out of the gospel. It's the feast of an American saint, naturalized American saint. We actually have two American saint feast days this week, which is remarkable, because St. Rose Philippine de Chain is later this week. But uh, St. Francis Xavier Cabrini was, of course, born in Italy in 1850. Her parents are farmers. She's the youngest of 13 children. She always says there's always room for one more. You never know what that last one will do. And there she was, youngest girl, uh, after she went through schooling, she wanted to apply to join the order that it, that it taught her, but she was very frail, and so the mother superior refused to take her because she wasn't strong enough. It is ironic. She ends up uh, running an orphanage, and then under the, you know, with the approval of the bishop, starting a congregation, Missionary Sisters of the Sacred Heart. And so she has an orphanage, puts school together. She's teaching needlework and things like that to the girls. And uh, she ends up going down to Rome and starting a school, and I believe an orphanage there, and meets with Leo XIII because she wanted to go to China. And he said, no, you're not going to go east, you're going to go west. I want you to take care of the Italians that have come over to the New World. And uh, that started on a project. The breviary tells us she crossed the ocean 24 times, and those would have been rough, rough crossings back in that day. It's not like jumping on a plane and coming over. So she came over here, here in Central America, South America too, anywhere where the Italians had immigrated, but she came over here, would set up things, orphanages, schools, started hospitals. Many of them have just closed in the past 10 or 20 years, but all over the place, in, in New York, in Chicago, Golden, Colorado, Denver, Colorado. In Scranton, where our parish is, it, the, the, the Italian parish, St. Lucie, is right down the street. If you walk down, if you're ever in Scranton at our parish, you just turn and start walking towards St. Lucie's. You just go down the street. And on the left, you'll see a little thing. It's like Cabini Drive or whatever. And right there, somebody can tell you, but she lived there when she'd be in Scranton. And I, I, I remember talking to one of our parishioners. His, both his grandmothers were taught uh, sewing. They'd bring a dime, and Mother Cabrini would, would show them things. Uh, show them how to sew or do needlework, whatever the case may be, but both of his grandparents. So there's people in Scranton whose grandparents knew, uh, knew a, a Catholic saint there. Anyway, uh, she died in Chicago, December 22, 1917, so just, uh, just a little under 100 years ago right now. We're almost up to her 100th anniversary. She died of malaria. She had, her malaria kept coming back, but she caught in Central America, and she died of that. Her relics right now for the most part, are in New York. If you ever go to New York City, you take the train that goes to the cloisters. So you go, get off of the cloister exit, the cloisters are here, just turn around. There's this unbelievably ugly chapel. It could only be something the Catholics built, and it's right there. You go over there. It used to be Mother Cabrini High School, but they closed the high school a couple years ago. But you go in there. Her relics are under the altar, except for her head, which is in Italy, and I think part of her arm is in Chicago. But she's right there for anybody that ends up in New York City. You can go actually uh, make a pilgrimage to see a Catholic saint, a canonized saint. Just a little bit on Mother Cabrini.